Hello, hello, hello! Welcome to another Sculpt Corner video. You know, in this video I wanted to touch base on some scaling things with inside of ZBrush. More importantly is looking at a model and understanding what the physical size real world is of the model with inside of ZBrush. So in fact, uh, whenever I'm doing toy work or things like that, this is something I'll do often is set the ZBrush world into like say millimeters or centimeters, whatever you might need. And I found the best way for me to do that is using a plugin um, which ships with ZBrush. So that plugin is Scale Master. So I'm going to dock this over again on our right tray. And I'm gonna look through my plugins here and I'm gonna open up Scale Master. So as an example, this head, let's say I was going to print this off. And in this video, I'm just using the model that ships with ZBrush so you all can follow along if you want to. So in Lightbox, it's right there, the demo f female head. So how big is this head? So let's say I am doing a, a toy for somebody and I want this to be head to be, a, let's say, four inches tall. Okay, from, from the neck to the head. So what I'm gonna do first is say, well, let's see how big this head is, all right? And the thing that everyone you wanna understand is when you're bringing something in ZBrush, it's not that it doesn't know the size of things, it absolutely knows the scale of something. It just doesn't know is that numerical value that it's being imported in, is it in the centimeter world? Is it in the millimeter world? Is it in an inch world, foot world, so forth and so on. So this is kind of how I can set the world scale of the current project that I'm working on inside of ZBrush. So I'm gonna click the set scene scale. This is gonna pull up and say, hey, this model is actually 1.27 by 2.01 by 1.48. So this is what I mean by ZBrush doesn't know is that millimeters, inches, feet, or centimeters. And this is in many programs. So there's programs that I'm gonna go through in this channel that I'm gonna run into the same thing, I have to tell the program, am I in inches world, centimeter world, and so forth. Okay, so you can see that this number is in all other sections, whatever you wanna call it, measurements, okay? And then there's a secondary number because then the actual default world of ZBrush is actually millimeters, and that's why you're only seeing only a millimeter number. And then so what this is doing is saying, this is the actual size of the model, but if you're saying that's actually in a centimeter world, but it's actually 0.127 centimeters by 0.2, so forth and so on. So the math is automatically being done in this plugin, okay? So let's just say, no, this model is actually 1.27 by two inches by 1.48 inches. So what just happened now is this has been set to inches world. And I'm gonna show something else in this video that kind of hits on that how it's set in inches world. So you can see in this plugin now that it automatically switches to inches here and it automatically switches inches to here for when you're gonna export, okay? So you can see my values now have come into play. Now, most of us are dealing with models that are multiple subtools within ZBrush, AKA multiple meshes. So in my subtool menu, you can see this particular mesh has two subtools. Now the thing I want you all to understand is that when I click on this subtool, you can see the measurements haven't changed. So this is why this plugin actually has a button here that says sliders to subtool size. So when I click this, that updates the three sliders and says, hey, these the eyeballs, which we have selected right now, which you can see I have selected, these are the size of those, those eyeballs. That's an actually the bounding box, okay? So if I was to arrow up key, now you can see the head is selected. I click this button, boom, I'm back to this. So now we're in the real world scenario, which some of us might know is, um, hey, your boss comes to you, your art director, your director comes to you. Hey, we've made changes. We're actually got a bigger budget. We're gonna make this model bigger. So instead of this head only being two inches tall, we're gonna double that and we're gonna make it four inches tall. So this is what I like to do is I like to come here, type in that four value, and I always hit enter with the sliders. 
And you can see the other two sliders are updating because I have this little R turned on, which you can see is lock the ratio. So that's just a ratio lock. And now what I want to do is I want to update the size of this model so that it is four inches tall in the ZBrush world now. Because don't, don't forget, when I set the scene scale, I set the scale in inches world. The thing here is all I've done is change sliders. I haven't physically changed the model's size yet. So that's what this button's going to do right here. And what I'm doing is I'm telling it to do it to all subtools. Because obviously I want the eyeballs to resize with this. So all I'm going to do is click the resize subtool. You can see that a model got bigger. And then it went back and down and then smaller. So what this has done is given me now a physical size of this head is 4 inches tall. So if I was to export this, it is 4 in inches tall. Now... What I can do also, what's nice about using this plugin, is if we were to switch to the gizmo, so I'm just hitting the W key on my keyboard, okay, which has switched me to that move button on the top of the UI. I'm going to actually turn off the gizmo, which is this button that I'm hovering over right now, which you can do with the Y key as well. You can see that's the shortcut. So I'm going to turn it off, and it's going to now give me the transpose line. Why do I care about this? Because the one beautiful thing about this plugin is that it automatically sets the transpose line to be a digital caliper. So in essence, when you guys are dragging out this transpose line, and for those people that have been using ZBrush for years, know what this feature is, you can see all these little dashes here. Those are actually measurements. So every big dash is an inch. And the reason why I know that is this plugin, when I set this scene scale, it's also setting this transpose line into the inches world. So what's happening here is in the preferences, there's transpose units. This whole menu is about setting this transpose lines into the units that you want. So I have like a minor tick, a major tick. So you can say, and the major tick is one, which I don't, ever change that. But let's say main, minor tick, you see it's four. So in essence, all these little, this is a quarter inch, quarter inch, quarter inch. So if I want more than that, I want this to be 10, right? And you can see now we've got 10 through the, from, from this bigger major one to this major one. So now I can actually use this as a measuring tool right with inside of ZBrush. So as an example, I'm going to turn off symmetry. So if I want to say, hey, what's what's the inches from this point of the eye to that point of the eye? So the beauty about this is it's snapping to a vertex point. Okay, our vertex points are every one of these points here. So you can see the brush is actually snapping to that with the red square that you're seeing. So that's a vertex point. So if I want to say, hey, what's the measurement from here to here? So you see it's snapped there and there. And what's going to happen is you're going to get your measurement right up here. Right? So I'm going to turn on my handy nanny magnifier. Right up here, right up here, right up here. So you can see 0.7377 inches. That's the measurement from that area to that area there. So in essence, if I wanted to know, hey, what's the measurement from pretty much the jaw? Let's kind of be about that high. You can see that's three inches. I'm just going to round up 3.1 if we want to get crazy, right? So here's an example why I also like this plugin. I'm able to do some kind of quick measurements and doing some decisions on here and what size is this? Now, the one thing that becomes difficult for me and when I'm doing toy work, there'll be times where like, hey, we need the model to be, they'll just give the measurements to me as an example, maybe. They'll say, hey, I need this to be no bigger than six inches by four inches by three inches, as an example, right? So this might be a little difficult to, well, how do I get exactly, I know from here to the highest point on the head, you know, I know it snaps and it's snapping, right? And I can see that, but is that 100% accurate for me to make sure? Because you can see I'm kind of on an angle with the transpose line. So this is what I like to do. I like to use this button right here, the new bounding box subtool. And when I press that, we create now ZBrush 
is a new box. And all that is, is a new subtool that's an actual bounding box. And so the beauty of this, this is super easy to snap to. So I'm gonna turn on transparency and you can see my head is in here, right? So it's looking at the values here and snapping to it. So if I turn off perspective here, right? And here we'll turn off ghost. So you can see the very bottom of the neck to the very top of the head, which is actually over here, that's the bounding box. And then the same thing if you look at the front from one ear to the other ear. So if I wanna know what is that measurement from ear to ear, I can now switch back to this mode, right? Sorry, switch back to the move mode. And because I have the transpose, I can tap and click. That I know clicked at that point to that point, and there's my measurement. I know now that's 2.5 inches across, and then I can go from here to here, and you can see that's four inches. So just round up, it's four inches. So I use this all the time. Especially if I know, hey, I got to change the overall scene. You know, hey, we don't want to be four inches tall anymore. Because instead of using just an individual subtool, like this head's only so big, but if I went to these eyes and mouth, you can see these aren't four inches. But then I know it needs to be four inches or, hey, it's going to be eight inches now. What I would do now is, okay, this needs to be at eight inches. I'd actually switch to the cube. I would click my slider update. You can see the sliders update. And I say now it needs to be eight inches tall. What's the other two update? Then I say all subtools, click on that. And then there you go, everything is updated. And this is very handy for me when I'm dealing with real world stuff. So, so you know what? I wanted to add more to this video. So I thought, you know what? I didn't show exporting this. So of course, to export this, you all you have to do is click this button export to unit scale so if you want to export all you can do all right here now another popular way especially we're going to be talking a lot about 3d printing on this channel because as a owner of 3d printers i'm using them constantly so if you're going to use a 3d print hub the one thing i want to make sure you do before you export an stl through here or a verbal through here is that you do this update size ratio. You can see right now, this is not set to what we want, right? We want obviously inches world, okay? So I'm gonna click this and you can see we get those either inches or millimeters. So I know this is supposed to be eight inches tall. So I'm gonna click on this and you can see now those sliders are updating. Now I would actually click this export STL, Vermal or OBJ. And that's to make sure when I'm exporting through this plugin that the sizing is correct. I hopefully you get a lot out of this. You know, thank you for watching this video on Sculpt Corner. Please continue to watch more, subscribe to the channel, and also don't forget to join the Discord so we can have conversations uh, throughout the day and maybe answer some questions and everyone can help each other. It's all about a community here. So thank you for watching again. Have a great day.